So I'm making this video game, and one of the core things in this game is an ability system. It's sort of like an XCOM-inspired game, but more focused on hand-to-hand -hand combat. And the, the meat and potatoes of this game is going to be having interesting things to do on this bottom bar where you, you know, do a melee attack or buff your team or, you know, do these things on your turn that use movement actions. Uh, it's pretty much the whole way that the user is going to interact with the game. So I knew I wanted to have lots of really interesting abilities, but I didn't want to write lots of repetitive, hard to maintain code. Uh, I've made games in the past like Paranautical Activity, where like if I wanted to add a single item to that game, even something that did something simple like just added damage or you know gave you a health bonus, I was writing you know several lines of code in several different classes and updating different prefabs, and it was like this whole ordeal. It wasn't like hard, but it was tedious. And when things like that are tedious, you end up doing them less, and you end up with a game that's worse and has less content. Because you just, like, I could have had three times as many items in that game if the system to make items was easier for me to use. So I knew making a good, verbose ability development system was a core crux of the technology I needed to create for this game. And the system I came up with uses Unity's scriptable objects. And basically, the entire ability, pretty much the idea is any ability, is just data. I don't have to write a single line of code. I can define everything that is an ability in one of these files, and then it just gets dropped onto a character as one of their abilities. If it's an enemy, the enemy AI automatically does some stuff to determine if the ability is usable based on the parameters, and then will execute it again based on the parameters. If it's a player ability, same thing. It shows you all the UI stuff you need to see. It's got an image for the, the icon. It's got a description all that stuff, it's all just data. And I've got a few examples here of the types of abilities that I can create with this system. Um, you can see this is a single target melee attack, has zero cooldown, so you can use it every turn, it has a range of one, so you have to be directly adjacent to an enemy to use it. It does not count diagonals within that range, so you couldn't, you'd have to hit someone in a cardinal direction. It requires line of sight. Uh, it can only hit enemies, it can only hit characters who are on the enemy team, and it can only hit a single character. It will always hit, minimum success chance is one, and one in 10 times it will crit. It does not spawn any objects when you run it. And then down here, so that's all like sort of this the parameters of what it can do and how it can target things, and then this is like the success chance, and then at the bottom we have the actual execution of what happens. Um, there's a series of steps, so I could add steps here if I wanted to. So it could like do damage and then also damage me. It could, I mean, I could do that all in one step, but you could, you know, you get the idea. Um, so in a step, you have three different potential outcomes. You have success, failure, and a crit. For the melee attack, if you fail, it just does nothing. On a crit, it does more damage. So here I apply damage to the target, value two, apply damage to the target value two. Um, so this is a pretty simple ability. I think to see how interesting these can become, I'll show a the buff heal effect. So this has a higher cooldown, a little bit of a higher range. Um, it targets friendlies only, and uh, it's also always successful, but it, it does not crit. Um, it does a heal effect and applies that to the target. And also it does a heal effect applied to myself. And the way this ends up working is for each target I heal for three, I heal myself for one. So now with this very simple system, because there's two things that happen when I am successful, I can now add these very complex effects. I could do something similar like a vampire ability where maybe I was doing, some, doing an attack where for each time it does damage to a target, it heals me for one. And this is all just with this very, very simple system where right now all I can do is heal or deal damage, and I can create these complex interwoven effects. And if I wanted to, I could make this effect work differently. I could instead say that these are two separate things where I heal myself for one, and I do not do the extra thing up here. And if I were to set it up like that, now, these are two separate steps. So instead of healing myself for one for each target I heal, now I'm just healing myself for one, period. So again, 
this system is designed to be very, very flexible. And that comes back to a second thing that I've been thinking about a lot when devising this is on one hand, you want to make something that's very easy to use so that you are, you're not dreading developing content like this. But on the other hand, if this is the language with which I'm creating the abilities, I'm going to be limited by this language. Like even with spoken language, there's studies that show like if you don't have a word for something, you can't even really think about that concept very well. And if you learn a word for something, you can literally think faster and in more complex ways about a topic. And in the same way, this is my language to create abilities. I need it to be as verbose as possible because it's not even a matter of I won't want to make more complex abilities if this system can't do it. I won't even have the thought. Like I thought of this healing yourself based on how many friendlies you heal purely based upon the fact that this system can do it. I was like looking at these little boxes and bars and adding stuff and messing around with it. And I was like, oh shoot, I can totally do this really cool thing. And to get back to how I can really double dip and just totally capitalize on every little piece of code I add to the system. Let's say I add an ability for a player to vanish so that they couldn't be targeted by any attack abilities for the entire duration of the turn. I could easily make it so that a character had an ability to vanish. You know, it targets yourself, it makes you vanish for one turn, done. But then without any additional code, I could have a weapon that the player could use that could make an enemy vanish. So maybe it's something that deals a lot of damage, but then that enemy gains sort of a buff for one turn, they can't be, be targeted. Or maybe I have a weapon that if you successfully shoot an enemy, you vanish. So you now this is all of a sudden, this isn't just an ability you can use. Now you have to successfully make a hit happen and then you vanish. Or I could make something that when you make a hit happen, all of your teammates vanish. Like any combination of you, your target, your teammates, all this stuff can really interact in interesting different ways. And all I have to do is add different types of things. Like pretty much the rest of this is more or less set in stone. Um, I can have it target only friendlies. I can have it target both teams. So maybe I wanted to do an area of effect where it uh, it is like an explosion that will deal damage to enemies, but also deal damage to you and your friends. So you have like a risk versus reward there. All this stuff just comes into a lot of upfront thought about the types of abilities I might want and how can that be boiled down into data. Um, and it really you know, maybe speaks to my limited skills as an engineer, but it took me a while to think of this and flesh it out to the point where I felt like it was a, a, a viable system. And I really, there was a couple of times there where I almost gave up on it. I was like, no, nah, this is too hard. Maybe I'll just do like multiple inheritance or something simpler and just have only basic types of abilities and just have, I, I was on the verge of just having a less cool game. I'm really glad that I I went the extra mile and I developed this system. And, and it's user-friendly enough that even a designer can use it. Like this isn't something that's limited to engineers. Um, I initially had the type field here. This was a, uh, this was just a message string and you would put in the name of the function you wanted to call. But A, I didn't want to have the potential for typos. Like if I rename a function or just type the name wrong, that's going to mess up everything. Uh, especially, you know, if I have a hundred of these abilities and I rename take damage to receive damage for some reason, um, all of a sudden every single ability breaks. So, I mean, Making it a uh, enumerated field definitely makes more sense, but um, also sort of goes gave me you know it gave me the seeded thought of trying to make this friendly enough that you know less technical people could potentially use this. This could eventually become like a community tool for the game where you know people can add their own abilities and uh, really opens the door to so many interesting things. And I hope that was interesting. It was a little more long and rambly than I anticipated, but uh, I'll see you in the next one.